All right, folks, we are going to go ahead and get started. I have uploaded a copy of uh, the agenda for this evening, as well as the last two treasurer's reports um, to chat if you want to follow along. Um, otherwise, I'll just be reading from the agenda as we go. So we will get started. Um, welcome tonight. Thank you again for joining us. If this is your first time at one of our Zoom meetings, we do ask that you keep your microphones muted unless you're presenting or uh, unless we're in a question and answer period, just to make sure that um, everyone can be heard easily and that there is no feedback. So thank you all for that. Um, when it is time to ask questions, I'll ask people to use the hand raise feature, but if you're not able to find that or you're calling in, no worries at all. Um, we'll still make sure to get to you. So I will move on to our treasurer's reports. We will have two this month. Um, Eric was not able to join us last month, so he'll be sharing both the April and May updates. And uh, Eric, since you'll be uh, introducing the audit results as well, you can just go right into that after the treasurer's reports. So. Floor is yours. Excellent. Thanks, Jess. Um, so we can actually skip the um, the, the March uh, balance sheet, and just go straight to the April balance sheet. It's just a point in time. Um, uh, so it'll the April balance sheet will reflect um, March as well. Give me one um, second. It's taking just a moment to pull up. Okay. Sorry, everyone, not sure. So I've got them grouped in two different reports, Eric. I'm just gonna go ahead and bring up um, the one from March and then I'll just I'll just skip over the- uh, Wait, well, I mean, I, I, it's fine. We can just do it like you got it pulled up. That's fine. Perfect, sorry. 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 Then I will share that now. Okay. Okay, excellent. Um, so do you wanna, oh, okay, do you wanna, this is April, it looks like. Do you wanna start with March? Uh, you know what? Let me pull that up one second. Good to go. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. okay. This works. Um, so really not, not much changed for, for March. Um, the biggest thing to note here is that the checking account, um, we did go down below a thousand dollars. Uh, you'll see here in a moment in April that that was basically, uh, we, we reversed that with some other income, but that's, um, essentially the, um, most to, um, notable thing here in March. Um, if you want to scroll up just to the income statement for March, um, uh, so here you can see we did have some um, residential memberships. The donations is largely from, let me get my notes uh, pulled up here. Uh, the donations were driven from personal donations that we took in cash, um, sorry, when card at the chili cook-off, as well as um, we did receive some Amazon Smile and Kroger Community Awards there. Um, you'll see we also started in March to collect um, yard sale map registration fees, as well as some of the uh, vendor booth registration for the festival. So you'll see that um, as well. Moving down into the expenses, um, sorry, that brought our total income for the for uh, March to 561. Um, in, in the expenses, you can see we have our normal um, rent and utilities. Nothing really changed there. We did have a large... Um, you'll see $559 um, expense. That was for our annual insurance premium that we have with the insurance company, um, which covers any of our activities, uh, normal BAU activities, I should say, and then the info center. And then we did have some technology memberships um, that renewed. Uh, Zoom was the one, um, the largest one there. And then um, we did have um, uh, a garden tour expense from the previous year's garden tour uh, to print the plaques, um, which was a total expense then for uh, $1,500, $1, $1, $1,500, a little over, um, for a net loss of the month for 954 roundup. Any questions for March? Okay. So then if we move into April. I, Eric, yes. I, did, I did have a question. Sure. Um, you were talking about the insurance covers the info center and something else. And just with the debate about if we ever get rid of the info center, would we still have that same um, insurance or would that go down? It probably would go down some. Um, most of what the um, it actually covers or just any of our liability for the association. So if we had um, 
uh, like a happy hour or, you know, like the garden tour, the festival is the only one that doesn't, uh, isn't covered under our general um, uh, 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 insurance um, because that includes alcohol. So we have to get a special rider for that, but all the rest of our events are covered and largely it's just the liability insurance at any of our events. So the, the info center is probably not the biggest portion of, of that, to be quite honest, but I would expect it probably to come down a little bit. Okay, thank you. Yeah, since we don't own the info center, it's not as big a deal for our insurance um, to, to cover. It's basically like renter's insurance, essentially. Okay, um, so then Jess, if you wanna um, start on the balance sheet, okay. Perfect. Um, so a couple of things to point out here. Uh, you can see that the checking account um, did come back up to our normal historical levels um, with some of the um, funds that we did receive, which we'll talk about here in a second. Um, petty cash also went up. So we did get a large portion of cash proceeds at the Chili Cookoff, which was the scholarship fundraiser for, um, for, for the scholarship fundraiser for that. So the petty cash did go up because of that. Um, normally I would be depositing that, but since we're going to have the festival, we'll just keep it. Um, and then I don't have to pull it out again separately. Um, and you can also see that the scholarship fund also increased um, there as well. So that are the kind of notable um, call outs there. And then just if we go back to um, the income statement, perfect. Um, so a couple things to call it here. So we did get a, a couple more um, residential memberships in, which is great. And then we've actually started to push out business memberships. So we've sent out um, uh, email reminders as well as some social media um, notices on business memberships. So you can see that we've received one silver and a couple bronze level business memberships. So excited to have those start to come through. We did also get more uh, Kroger Community Rewards uh, that came in as well. And then um, uh, continuing down into the donations, the grant funding was also from uh, the Chili Cookoff proceeds there that I mentioned. We continue to get um, yard sale map registrations and then the summer festival booth registrations as well. So we had a net um, uh, net uh, income for, sorry, total income for the uh, for last month of almost $1,700. Um, then moving down into the expenses, typical uh, rent and utilities. However, you'll see that under lease and rent there, it's 510. So we did actually pay our lease payment for the pocket park, which is $10 to the city. So that's why that is normally 500, but for it's a yearly lease for $10. So that's where that is um, on that. And uh, we did the, the one, um, refund under technologies we did get a month refunded back from zoom um, for that amount so any questions on the april um, income statement or balance sheet okay excellent um so then and uh we'll move over to the um, audit committee report so matt patson if anyone knows um, him he was on the audit committee last year with actually lena who's on the board now um, Matt agreed to be our sole audit committee member for the year, um, and he did perform um, our, basically it's a financial review, it's not a full-blown audit, but um, he did perform that for this year and did look, and we did notice that there is a typo in his um, uh, email, so we'll get that changed, um, uh, have him resend us that, but um, essentially he looked at the books for the last year, um, he did um, some kind of inspections on a couple different receipts and things that we had expenses that we had um, and as you can see here in his opinion um, everything looked fine there were no material um, uh, inconsistencies last year if you do recall the audit committee did give me two recommendations which we've incorporated um, both of those and so those recommendations were not noted no, um, identified as well again this year so that was good for me that um, i um, you know uh, you know, improved our process a little bit. Any questions on the audit um, report? All right, and I think that's it for me. Jess, I'll turn it back over to you. Thanks everybody. Thank you so much. And Eric, thank you for keeping our books so spick and span and in such great order that uh, it is hopefully easy work for the audit committee. We definitely appreciate you. 
All right, well, we will move on here. I will turn the floor over to Tate. Uh, Tate is our zoning chair. We do have one zoning item on the agenda tonight. Um, we'll have three portions to this next section. We'll spend the first five minutes allowing the applicant to share information about the variances that they're requesting. The second five minutes, Tate will bring a document up on the screen that lists those variances and documents any questions folks might have. And then we'll spend the final five minutes with the applicant answering those questions. So um, as the questions are asked, they won't be answered immediately. We just want to make sure we can gather them all so that we don't have duplication um, and can get everything answered. So. Take the floor, yours. All right, thanks, Jess. Uh, hi, everybody. So I'll just briefly introduce the, the zoning variance application, and then I'll let them uh, kind of have the floor here. So it's, as Jess mentioned, it's at 1305 City Park Avenue. Um, the applicant is proposing to allow the preservation of the existing historical house and provide additional housing in the neighborhood. Uh, and there's several variances here, so I won't take up too much time and let them kind of go through each one there. Um, so. I'll, I'll go ahead and turn the floor over to, I believe they're both here, Jack Reynolds and I believe Sean as well. I am here and I hope Chase is there or Sean is there. Yeah, I'm Chase. It says Sean on my the screen name. I couldn't figure out how to change it, but I'm Chase. And Jack Reynolds. Uh, let me just simply say, because Chase has got the the floor, so to speak, because it's his vision of the redevelopment of the lot with the new house, but uh, there are nine variances that are being requested through the council variance, which is 2206. And they all are relative to the existing house and the proposed second house that we're, we're gonna locate on the existing lot. Again, 1305 City Park Avenue, very small lot, uh, 32 by 111 feet in depth. Uh, and again, uh, let me let uh, Chase spend the next four and a half minutes kind of going through his vision of the development of the property. Go ahead, Chase. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Jack. And do we have, are we able to pull up the application? This is my first. My yes, first if you have a document you'd like to share, absolutely, please feel free. Okay, perfect. Um, well, I'll introduce myself first because uh, uh, that that may be helpful to kind of understand some background. So we are, uh, I'm the managing partner of Urban Land Company. We do own the property that we're coming in for uh, re rezoning on, but we also um, were the developer of the property to the south, the Bonners Mill uh, townhouses. And I actually have been uh, before the the commission once before, uh, or, or the association here, just talking about um, talking about that property. Uh, and I also uh, was not only the, the developer of the property, but I purchased one of the townhouses. So my wife and I actually live in the northmost, uh, in the northmost townhouse. Um, so I live immediately right next door to this property. So if I mess anything up, I'll be in a lot of trouble with my wife. But uh, in any event, We've owned the property for a number of years. We acquired it back when we were developing uh, the Bonners Mill, Bonners Mill townhouses. And we've been trying to figure out uh, exactly what we wanted to do with it. The, ha the house that currently sits on the property is uh, over 100 years old, uh, but it sits in the very back of the lot. It's, uh, it's kind of a, a, a bit of a conundrum the way that this lot works. So there's a, a kind of a large open area out in the front of the house and then the house itself sits uh, all the way in the back. And so we started looking at uh, a couple of different ideas, things that we could do with it. And we were struggling with um, coming up with a plan that, you know, that didn't involve tearing the house down. It was really uh, something that was a big goal of ours was to say, how can we incorporate this into the plan and keep it? So where we've landed uh, now, which is our current application, is that we would build a new structure in about the middle of the lot that would be a one bedroom, two story cottage. Uh, so I refer to that as, as the cottage usually. It would be, uh, the ground floor would be a kitchen and living room, small kitchen and living room uh, with a fireplace. And then the second story would be one bedroom uh, with a bathroom and a closet. Um, so a pretty simple one, one bedroom cottage structure. And then in front of it, we've planned a, a large uh, garden space uh, with, with an entry sequence um, 
that, that kind of takes up the space from where the cottage would be up to City Park Avenue. And then what we've proposed to do with the existing house that is on the, uh, the back end of the lot is to convert it into a carriage house. So along that section of Pearl Street, there are no other residential structures. Everything is garages or this actually backs up to the, to the uh, high stop. Uh, kind of where all their their um, dumpsters and stuff are, and so what we've determined that uh, that we think would be the best way to get you know parking onto the site is to take the ground floor of the existing house and add garage doors from the alley and and allow that to be uh, garage parking, and then take the upstairs of the house and treat it as a carriage house and turn that into uh, a, a unit as well. So we would have. Um, one unit in the cottage and a separate in the um, in the carriage house that would sit behind it. That's the basic uh, the basic vision for the property. Um, I'm happy to go into into more detail, but um, maybe we should uh, maybe we'll get into a little more detail when we get into questions. So the only thing. Only thing I would add is that out of the nine, the majority of the variances are uh, with the new structure, but still we're, we're recognizing the fact that the existing house fronts on the Pearl Street's uh, frontage, that the lot is less than 6,000 square feet, that the side yards don't meet the minimum three feet, and that, uh, oh, I'm trying to think. Oh, and that the lot width is less than 50 feet. So, you know, we're, we're starting off with a sub par R2F lot. And so those are some of the variances that you see within the nine that are requested. So we can take some questions. Perfect, thank you. All right, well, Tate's gonna bring up the document on the screen um, and he'll take your questions down as you have them. So I don't see any hands raised yet, um, but if everyone, anyone has any questions they'd like to ask, please go ahead and raise your hand. Kyle Green. Hi. Yeah, I just, um, I had a question of um, the thought process between, um, behind putting the new cottage in the middle of the site, when I think of more appropriate location would be closer to city park in line with all the other houses along the site. Um, but other than that, I, I support most of the other variances. I just had that question. Thanks. Yeah, that sounds good. All right. Uh, let's see here. I don't see any other hands raised yet. Are there any, is there anyone out there that has a question? Okay. Well, we may only have one then. Um, in that case, I think Tate, you're probably still typing. Yeah, just to be clear, the, the question was, why is it at which location? Or could you, could you kind of clarify? I'm sorry, Kyle. Yeah, that's all right. Um, why the new cottage is located in the middle of the site instead of in line with the other houses along City Park um, with a similar setback. Okay, perfect, thank you. Well, I believe, at least for now, that is our only question. Um, so applicant, if you'd like to go ahead and respond to that, we can go forward. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate that. That's, a, uh, I think, a really good question about this site and one that we were um, really trying to figure out when we were testing several different concepts. The genesis of the, of the thought was that we wanted the two structures to be close enough together that they could be uh, connected if, if we ever wanted to do that at a, at a later point. And since the house is in the back, you know, if, if you build out all the way to the front, you just end up with, uh, with no open space at all. And so to try to sort of solve that, uh, ha having the cottage kind of in the middle of the site, we came up with this uh, front court sort of thought. It reminds me a lot of, um, I, I was, I, was, took a trip to Charleston, South Carolina recently and was walking around the historic district. And I think in you know, our historic district here in Columbus, we have some similar situations where you'll have these uh, walled gardens. And so the garden wall really kind of becomes the street wall. It's the thing that uh, sort of respects the build to line of the lot and brings the frontage and the address and the, you know, the mailbox and the, and the doorbell and, you know, and, a, and a gate all the way up to that kind of build to line. But then you have this 
um, this kind of front garden space. And by doing that, we were, we were able to get two separate outdoor spaces, a small one that's in between the cottage and the carriage house, and then the, uh, the kind of front garden space uh, in front of the, um, the cottage. Thank you very much. Okay, and well. All, all I would add is that one of the variants is, is also to allow the six foot high fence in front of the building setback. So again, it, it, is a, it is a building there in front and it is, necess it, it is a, an amenity for the front of that new carriage or new cottage that uh, Chase is proposing. So that is one of the variances of the nine. Thanks, Jack. And Kyle, I see you have your hand back up. Um, yeah, just what, what, kind, what, um, what material is that fence? I didn't see it on there. Uh, yeah, the, the garden wall is uh, concrete. It's proposed to be concrete and stucco. So Jess, I can't figure out how to raise my hand, but I've got- Go for it, Eric. Um, and maybe I'm, so you're going to put a six foot, you want to put a six foot wall that you can't see through. So basically the, the, from the streetscape, it's just going to be a solid, solid concrete wall, you said? Yeah, so the garden wall itself would be um, uh, not entirely opaque. Uh, the plan is to have... Um, a couple of spots like if you if you go to the kind of the urban garden wall example what what typically is done is there are small view portals it's called a it's called a voyeurie I, i'm not sure if i'm my french is correct there but uh it, it's a small portal there would be one in the gate and, and there will probably be a couple other in the wall and the idea is that um from the street you get some glimpses into the space but that you still have um, some privacy in the kind of urban garden space as well. Okay, because I think most of the one the houses in the neighborhood, I think that have a further setback where they basically have a front yard instead of a backyard. Most of them that I've seen don't have, um, you know, it, it doesn't obstruct the streetscape there. Um, so that would be definitely unique to to the what we have locally in you know both kind of German Marion Village. Yeah, I, I think it'll look like uh, some properties that um, that that we could point to in in certainly the German Village area where you've got kind of a really small yard and there's a kind of a hard perimeter to it, but you know, you're still able to see into it and and see the whole uh, cottage structure. Um, so I think there's a, uh, a it's a it's kind of a very intentional urban design move it's kind of this balance between you know what you're trying to do is create a, a usable yard space um you know that's in that's in front of the the structure uh that that is not subtractive to the street in any way that i think is additive to the to the public realm uh you know but that also kind of functions as this as this garden space okay i would also i would also point out that the fence actually sits back off of the right of way so there's going to be a green space to the right of way and then there'll be the sidewalk so there'll be some landscaping in front of the wall along the sidewalk that ultimately gets out to the curb of city park so it doesn't run straight up to uh, the sidewalk, there is kind of a, an opening space to get into uh, the, uh, the garden area. And I think Chase described they're going to have a really nice looking gate that will have some openings in it that will provide an, uh, an opportunity to see in. So it's not right up on the right of way. Uh, it will be set back with green space and trees and shrubbery in front of it. Yeah. Thank you, Jack. Thanks, Jack. Okay, we got about another minute here for question and answer. Uh, Allison, I believe you had a question. I was just going to say, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, yes. Thank you. Um, do you have a sketch or a picture of that? Just so we can even just something. 
Yeah, I, I can let me try to log in uh, on my desktop here and I'll see if I can pull something up. I apologize. I, I thought that it would might have been in the uh, in the package here. It's okay. Thank sketch you. Of the, sketch of the wall, Allison, just to clarify. Yeah, or like, I mean, whatever, any of it, whatever it looks like, right? Like, I think a big question is the wall. So, yeah. I, I have the application. Is there, I can pull that up to see if you have, I know you have some sketches there. Do you know if, um, Chase, do you know if there's? Uh, no, I, we've got, I know that we have, Chase has got a sketch of the proposed cottage, but I don't know if we have a uh, rendering of the wall itself. Uh, that would be, yeah. So there's the, so you can see there, uh, the, uh, the wall is almost set back to the front of the, the uh, condo units to the south of us. And it, you know, it is set back five feet from the right of way, which allows some more green space and then the sidewalk itself. So it's not right up on the right of way. And it is, I think it's, it's about, oh, 26 foot wide. So once again, it's not a very large garden in terms of, you know, how it sets up on the lot. But again, it is an amenity that is there for the front, front house as uh, as Chase indicated. Okay, so it, it sounds like you there there isn't a rendering of, of that wall, correct? I just don't want to move on if uh, Chase was still trying to pull something up. Uh, no apologies, there's not an elevation of the wall. Uh, no, no problem. Plan, um, but the, the application shows we have a, maybe an enlarged landscape plan, but the application shows you um, pr pretty much the same thing. All right, uh, any final questions? And if anyone's having trouble using raise hand feature and you just want to unmute uh, and ask your question, otherwise we are out of time for question and answer, so we would move on to voting typically. Okay, looks like we captured everything. Um, in that case, Tate, would you mind just zooming in a bit on the actual list of variances there so folks can see those clearly while we vote? Um, I will be calling on your names to ask you to vote on these. Um, please note that for the Area Commission's purposes, you are able to vote on each item individually, or as I call on you, you can choose to say um, that you support, oppose, or abstain to all. Um, if you do want to vote differently on different items, please just let me know that, and I will certainly get your votes down. So, without further ado... And, oh, no ahead. other questions? I'm just trying to make sure that we've answered everybody's <laughs> questions if we can. Or if there are really any issues, let us know. Yeah, don't see any hands raised. Um, anyone, no one has unmuted, so I believe that's all we have for now. Can we, can we can everybody see those variances okay? Yes, looks great, Tate, thank you. All right, everyone bear with me here. I'll just go through the list um, so we oh, can capture votes. Can I ask, I'm sorry, one, one quick question. I just am not sure that I understand the encroachment number nine. What, what are we encroaching on? There we go. Yes, ma'am. The, the number nine is the wall that we're discussing because the building setback is 10 feet off of City Park Avenue. And anything 10 feet, I mean, anything that is six feet high in the front yard, they consider to be a building. So that is the request is to allow that fence, which is considered a building in the front yard to encroach into the 10 foot setback. Okay, Five thank you. Feet. Perfect, thank you so much. All right, thank you. Okay, Tate, you are actually up first. All righty, I support uh, all nine. All right, give me one second here, guys. I just wanna get set up here. Uh, with this many items, it takes just a minute to start off. Okay, uh, next, Allison Wilford. Sorry, my dog is barking. I uh, I support all. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. Is Rada with you? She was supposed to get on herself, but I don't see her. Okay, Andrew Hall.
Uh, we're going to support all. All right. Andrew, I'm so sorry. I, I cannot recall. Uh, your wife's name, please. Uh, this is Nicole. Nicole. Okay. Okay. One moment. Let me just make sure I capture both of your votes. All right. Thank you both very much. Thank mm -hmm. you. Okay, moving on here. And we've got David Hoyt. Support all. Thank you, David. Eric Stegmuller. I support all. Thank you very much. Heather Fian. I support all. Thank you, Heather. Uh, Kevin Parsich. Uh, supporting all of the variances. And uh, sorry about my kindergartner unmuting me earlier. It's, it's okay. She's just doing her civic duty. We appreciate uh, <laughs> her being here. Thanks. All right. Let's see here. Next name up. Kyle Green. I'm going to vote no on the wall variance and yes on the on the, all the other ones. Okay, just to verify. All right, so and you're voting no on number nine, is that correct? correct. Yeah. All right, and yes on all other items. Yep. All right, thank you very much. Lauren Larrick? Yes to all. And is Mike with you? I am, but I missed the presentation, so I'll abstain. Okay, thanks so much, Mike. All right, one second here, folks. All right, Lena Grzewski. Um, Except for number nine, I vote no, all the others, yes. Okay, so yes to one through eight and no on nine. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you, Mark Huckabee. Hey, I vote no on the wall and yes to all the others. All right, yes, one through eight, no on number nine. Thank you, Mark. Okay, let me just scroll down here briefly. Miles Thomas? I'm gonna vote uh, yes to all. Okay, thank you very much, Miles. All right, and Steve David? Yes to all, please, thank you. Thank you very much. All right, does anybody believe I missed them uh, in the voting? Okay, in that case, we have a total of uh, 14 in favor on items one through eight, with one abstention on items one through eight and none opposed. And on item nine, we have eight in favor, three opposed and one abstention. Uh, so this moves forward and passes on to the area commission and we will share those numbers with them. Um, we appreciate you for being here tonight uh, and sharing your application with us and uh, certainly hope Chase, hope to see you as a member of the association soon as one of our neighbors. Thank you. Appreciate it, everybody. Good to talk to you. Thanks Thank again you very for being much here. for your time this evening. Yes. Thank you, Jack. Okay. All right, we're going to move on here. Uh, we will actually talk now about the four Marion Green cleanups that have been scheduled. And I'm going to turn the floor over to a local volunteer, Drew Moss, who has been heading up that effort. Uh, Drew, take it away. Well, hi, everybody. I'm Drew Moss. Um, I'm a, a Marion Village uh, resident since 2018 and happy to see some familiar faces here tonight. Um, so Marion Green is a, it's a really informal, just kind of organically developed uh, cleanup club that my husband and I started a little bit out of boredom during the pandemic and just kind of looking for purposeful things to do. Um, and so, it, and then it just kind of grew. So basically what we do is we will go out on a Saturday. Um, we will just, uh, you know, clean up and kind of canvas the different streets throughout Marion Village, maybe picking different areas at different times. And uh, we'll, we'll collect all of you know, the litter that we uh, are able to collect and we'll sort out what's recyclable. That's an important piece of, of this to us. Um, so just to give numbers, this is not a, a humble brag or anything. It's just to give us a an understanding of the scale of litter. Um, we've picked up about 3000 gallons of litter 
um, in the last year and a half, and we've been able to recycle about 42% of that. Um, so really proud of that effort and um, just proud to be of service to the community. And I wanna say thank you to Jess and to MVA for being so supportive of us throughout um, our, our work. And uh, MVA is actually helping to sponsor uh, some cleanup events that we would like to host this summer. So um, Jess has been really helpful in, in coordinating some announcements through Facebook and, and the MVA page. So you might notice, oh, thank you, Allison, thanks so much. Um, you might notice uh, in, in some of the recent announcements, we are gonna have cleanups on May the 28th, uh, June the 25th, July 23rd, and um, August 27th. And all of our cleanups are hosted in Moeller Park um, from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. And the nice thing is MVA has, has sponsored some prizes for people who volunteer this year. So if you volunteer for one of those four cleanup events, um, we will pat you on the back and give you a water and really be grateful to you. Um, but if you come twice, this is where the prizes kick in. Um, if you come twice to two of the cleanups, you've, you've got um, a Marion Village tote bag that will be given to you. Um, if you volunteer three times, uh, you'll be rewarded with uh, either two drink tokens for the MVA festival or um, a classic MVA t-shirt, which sounds really cool. Uh, and then lastly, if you volunteer for all four times, MVA is being very generous and offering a year of membership. Uh, in the MVA. So we will have, I think, a job form kind of system where when people come, we'll make sure they're able to fill that out. That'll go directly to MVA. Um, and that is, that's essentially it. It's very uncomplicated. We ask people if they, you know, if they would like to come just help to sort through some of the recycling. Sounds like kind of a gross job, but we have lots of good protective equipment. Um, you know, we'll make sure that you know, you're doing what fits best for you. If you'd like to come out and volunteer, if you just want to come out and walk with people who are picking stuff up and you just want to spend time with neighbors, um, that could be a good use of the time too. So um, I'm happy to answer any questions that people have and also just put our Facebook link in the chat. And yes, I believe we're on the fourth Saturday of each month. There we go. And I'll just open the floor. If anyone has any questions um, for Drew, please feel free to go right ahead. Hey, this is Mark. I might have missed it. Are uh, tools provided or do we need to bring buckets and grabbers and all that stuff? That's a great question. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think if you have those things, buckets, grabbers, we usually use like the Lowe's five gallon buckets or recommend something about that size. If you have them, feel free to bring them, but we usually have a good um, helping of, of extras for folks who don't. We also supply gloves, um, you know, other kind of like protective gear over your clothing if you're sorting through. Uh, we don't want anyone to touch anything that's dangerous or, or sharp, anything that could cause injuries. So we've got some kind of guidelines we walk folks through, but yeah, we, we provide it if you don't have it. Great, thank you. Okay, any other questions for Drew? All right, I think that's it. I, I would just add to, oh, I think, um, the cleanups are going to follow, right, Drew, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they're going to follow the fitness in the park. So um, you can do, go get your yoga and then go take a little break and then go um, do some cleanup work and walk around and walk your yoga off. So um, it's a good, uh, good way to kind of fill up, fill up, you know, morning, early afternoon ish. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Eric. That's right. So good way to spend a Saturday. Busy summer in Marion Village this year. Looking forward to all of the different things happening. Okay. Anything else for Drew uh, before we go on to the next item? Just huge thank you. Great. Thank you so much. We're so excited. Um, everything that, you know, helps to make the neighborhood more beautiful. And I think that extra layer where you guys are out there, you know, sorting the recyclables is pretty amazing honestly it's it's pretty incredible so we really appreciate you and um excited to see how these this year's cleanups go i do have a quick question sorry i'm just curious Drew. do you target so you said it's just based around molar park i was just curious if um certain other areas of the neighborhood were targeted yeah we try to you know cover a good cross section of of the entire you know boundaries of marion village but we we 
will target High Street and Parsons pretty often um, because those tend to collect um, the most litter in, in some difficult places sometimes or just places that are kind of like in between properties. So, um, you know, looking at alleys sometimes as well. Um, so, so, you know, open to feedback. If folks have ideas of places we should target, feel free to reach out. Um, our, our, you know, we could reach us through Messenger, through Facebook, um, you know, if you have ideas of where we should, should go. Uh, I will just suggest, since I live by Kroger, uh, there is quite a bit of debris and trash by Kroger, I will say. <laughs> Always. Thank you for that tip. Yeah, we, we've been over there a couple of times. We will we'll head back there first, maybe on this next run. No worries. Thanks, Drew. Awesome. Well, thank you again so much, Drew. Looking forward to it. And uh, we will get as many folks excited about coming out to join as we can. Thank you so much. Everybody have a good night. Thanks, you too. All right, everyone, we are going to move into our next topic here. So this is going to be kind of an open discussion. Um, we've talked a bit about this earlier uh, last year. We chatted about it a couple months ago briefly, um, but we want to talk about MVA monthly meetings and what the future of those meetings will look like. Um, so what we're going to do first is just share with you kind of the information that we've gathered over the last several months, um, what kind of different options we might have, and then we'd like to hear feedback from everyone, um, because if you're here tonight, you're someone who obviously attends our meetings and we want to hear from you. So um, the conversation has come up. Do we return to in-person meetings at the Info Center? Do we continue to meet uh, through Zoom? And, you know, we've certainly heard both sides. Um, some folks really miss kind of that social aspect of getting to see folks in person when we go to the Info Center, um, while others tell us that they, you know, really appreciate the convenience of being able to meet in a remote environment. Maybe you have kids at home or you just have a busy schedule. Um, so we kind of want to hear what your thoughts are. We discussed the possibility of a hybrid model where we could still have a virtual meeting that we publicized, you know, at the info center and, and folks could attend either one they wanted. Um, unfortunately, as far as that's concerned, it's, it's not super feasible. There would be some upfront costs, um, probably a projector, uh, a laptop or computer for the info center. Uh, we would have to have hardwired internet. And of course, there's, there's no internet at the info center right now. Um, so we would have to invest in some technology to make that work. And then, of course, we would have the ongoing cost of uh, Wi-Fi. So doing both probably isn't an option, um, but we want to hear from you. What, what are your thoughts? I'm just going to open the floor for this one. So no need to raise your hand. Just let us know your thoughts and, and please share. Oh, well, since I can't find the raise hand feature, I appreciate you not making that a requirement. Um, I love being in person but it is it it was hard for me when we weren't when we were in person because i wasn't able to make any of the meetings because of my schedule so i do enjoy the zoom and i think that i i would appreciate us keeping them in um on zoom um as someone who has run hybrid meetings um it, it is a lot of work and i know that uh, being a uh, board member is a lot of work and so i don't feel that it is our job as a neighborhood to put that on our board um to run those meetings um i think that we have a lot of really great especially with things opening back up we have a lot of great in-person opportunities for people to um you know, see each other in person and my camera's falling. So that's why I look like I'm tricking. Um, but especially someone with a child and it's a little easier for me because my child is older, um, you know, but it is, you know, I fed him dinner and whatever and ran up here and got on my computer before two, you know, two minutes before the meeting. Um, so that is helpful that, um, you know, we're on Zoom. So I, I think I vote for keeping it on Zoom. I'm imagining you in quicksand. This <laughs> like Gilligan's Island. Yeah, that's what that Sorry. is. <laughs> Love it. Mark, I see you unmuted. Did you have a thought? Yeah, sure. I'll go, I, I agree. Um, it just, you know, life is different and uh, we're all Zoom. And I mean, my entire day at the hospital is pretty much, you know, Zooming and stuff. And uh, it provides significant convenience that I believe outweighs that uh, once touch face in person. So my vote is to remain Zoom because I believe it allows a greater audience and things like that if, if a hybrid is not possible and i understand those costs so i'm, I'm voting for virtual lauren go for it it's actually mike um i oh, just want 
fun to point out that I've seen on the past several meetings that there are families with younger children that have joined. And in the in-person meetings, I don't know if I ever saw children there. So I'm, you know, going back to in-person, I wonder if we'd miss that whole group of, you know, neighbors that can join a meeting like this where they can multitask. So I'm definitely in favor of keeping them virtual for now. Of course, Mike, that means that you as a so social committee has to make sure there's plenty of social opportunities for folks uh, to, to still see each other in person, but I don't think you would have a problem with that. You like yeah, getting that, people out and about. That sounds horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Does it sound awful? <laughs> Kyle, go ahead. Yeah, I'll just, um, I'll, I'll piggyback on that. I have a two and a half year old and the chances that of me being able to join the meeting at this time is exponentially higher when it's on Zoom. So just from the convenience factor, um, I really, I like the Zoom meeting. Andrew and Nicole. Yeah, we're, we're definitely in favor of keeping it Zoom. Uh, we do sort of miss the social interaction, but we figure that we get plenty of that with uh, some of the other MVA stuff. Or I just wanted to take a moment to recognize. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Even, you're fine. No, to do something where it's like a, maybe quarterly to do something in person, just to have like an option if you wanted to attend. Okay. Allison has changed her background image to uh, coincide with her current camera situation. So I guess that's another vote for Zoom so that we can see crazy backgrounds. <laughs> um, is there anyone, uh, let me ask actually, is there anyone attending tonight? And I, I think I know the answer to this, but I don't wanna, it, it's been a while since we've been in person. So I don't wanna misremember. Um, are there folks joining us tonight who have only been joining us since we had Zoom and, um, never joined previously. I thought so, Nicole and Andrew, I didn't think so. Tate, that's right, actually. David, yes, one of our board members. Lena, I think you as well. I've Amen. never been in person as well. Very interesting. We got a lot of new faces. It's, but, you know, I think that um, also we've, we've really tried to ramp up our efforts um, at not only advertising meetings, but reminding folks that meetings are happening just because we all get busy. We know it's hard to remember uh, that there's a meeting every month. Steve, go right ahead. Awesome, thanks, Jess. So I think I am like the low, oh yeah, you were really lower for me, awesome, thank you. So I think I am like the lone voice who like does like prefer the in-person meeting and like like I've got small kids, I get the convenience piece and like you, you know what I'm not, like, I hear from y'all like that's kind of where folks are trending. Um, I would definitely be down to like sit down with the board and like think about ways that we can build some of that interactive pieces like into this. So like, you know, I, I'm thinking like simple things about like the static slide has like a check-in question, just like a silly, you know, a silly, or like something where we like really like take into or intentional about like using this platform as like a means for engagement so that it's not, you know, because like we're all like in a lot of like corporate businessy kind of setting type things like throughout the course of our day. And I think like there's some innovative things we can do here. So like, I would, I'd love to, you know, chat with Jess or like folks on the board about like some ways we can think about that. Um, as well as like the, the voting procedure, I think is something that like could like really use a second look, like to put folks on the spot to be like the first or second vote to me is just like, so like a way that we, you know, and, and I think we would probably get around it with like a Google form or something like that, where like, you, you know, so um, I definitely like, I'll, um, I'll do the follow-up on this, like reaching out to you, Jess, or like anybody else on the board that wants to talk about maybe some ways we could think about the digital format a little differently. Yes, I completely agree. Um, you know, I will uh, say I appreciate all of you so much uh, with the voting process. You're all so wonderful at making it as smooth as possible, but um, especially when we have a lot of folks, the voting process can feel a bit arduous. So if we can find a better way to do that, um, if we do remain um, virtual, I think that's a, a great suggestion. Anybody else have anything they'd like to share? Okay. All right, so we could, we have a couple different options here, um, and I will leave this to uh, non-board members to decide if they want to call a motion. We could call a motion to do a formal vote and determine whether or not we uh, formally um, basically keep meetings in person until said time where that, that becomes a, another vote that changes it, or um, we don't need to do that. It's just whatever the, the group would like to, to do to proceed, so. I don't think, I mean, for me anyway, I don't, I don't think we need a formal vote. I don't know. Does anybody else feel that way? Okay. All right. 
in that case, we will proceed with um, keeping meetings virtual. Um, Stephen, we definitely would love to chat with you and anyone else who has some thoughts on how to make these meetings more engaging, more interactive. Um, and then, of course, if you have, you know, ideas about different social aspects, we'll touch on that in just a minute anyway. Um, you know, we want to give folks the opportunity to see each other in person as well. Um, we are a neighborhood association, so there, there definitely is a, a community aspect that we want to make sure is at the forefront of everything we're doing. So, wonderful. This is a great discussion. Thanks you all so much for participating. Um, and we will move on. We're, we're not even halfway through the agenda yet, folks, so we got more to go. So, thanks again, guys, and we will move on. All right, scholarship. Lauren, would you like to give an update on this year's scholarship? Um, sure, I mean, there's not too much since last time. The um, scholarship application for our South High students and se or seniors is live uh, on the website. Um, we also try to distribute paper copies, but really the online um, format seems to be pref preferred. Um, and they have until the end of May to fill up fill an application. Um, so we're kind of just waiting for that. And then when uh, we have some applications and the deadline's expired, the committee will convene and um, figure out who to award scholarship to. Fantastic. Thank you, Lauren, so much for your work and the committee's work. Uh, hoping that the school helps us get the word out and we get some applications and excited to see who our winner or winners will be this year. Okay, Tate, may I ask you to give a mural update? Yes, and I'm actually gonna share my screen too. Wonderful. I just pulled it up, so I'm glad I was second. Okay, one second here. Okay. Can everybody see that okay? Sure can. Perfect, so really exciting news. Uh, Roa was able to start through the kind of crappy weather that we had um, on the 30th. Um, on Saturday, and man, I am blown away already, so I hope you guys are as well. Um, so unfortunately, because of the rain, we had to pull, uh, or the food trucks pulled, um, understandably so, but we still had a good turnout. A lot of people on this call came in and supported, so I really do appreciate seeing those faces there, and um, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm blown away with uh, Ro, what Ro has already done, and uh, I'm excited to see the finished product, and I hope you guys are as well. Um, He's going to be continuing to work on it. There's not um, too much to update. Um, obviously, this is not finished yet. He's going to continue to work on it um, throughout when, when he has time. Uh, I am going to talk to the committee to see if we can kind of make up for that loss. Uh, if we can kind of do maybe a reveal and get those food trucks back, possibly. Um, and then uh, having, again, we're going to try to do like a little have a jar for him or have something where people can donate money if they, they they feel like they need to as well. So that would to give him a little more money in his pocket as well. So uh, if you guys have any comments, I'd love to hear them and I can send them to Ro if you have anything as well. Are you, um, I know the committee has talked about also pursuing additional mural projects because I know people are really excited. Are you gonna still be involved in, in that committee and process? You know you're our zoning chair now, so I wasn't sure if you'd still be doing uh, mural work. Yeah, way to put me on the spot, Jess. I know. Uh, I, I, <laughs> I'm learning I, from I, Eric. I'm, I'm going to probably put one foot out of the circle, um, but I'll still be, I haven't told Tom yet, so don't tell him, <laughs> but I'll probably be uh, more, I want to be more focused on zoning because um, I, I, I do think there, there could be some improvements with that that could use my attention, especially with like the voting and the online comment we talked about. I'm excited that that was mentioned earlier because um, that, that was some of my ideas to kind of, change that how we do that as well so uh but I, I still i still love this and um i would still like to help out as much as possible but yeah i think i'm gonna maybe duck a little bit but so we very much appreciate you being uh, our zoning chair so and the updates you're giving about the mural are fantastic so uh that is okay we will rope one of the other folks into giving us updates as you kind of step more towards zoning anyone have any questions or uh thoughts on mural they'd like to share before we move on yeah hey, I just Go oh, go ahead, Mark. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, can, I, it may be on the site and I just haven't seen it. What's the story? What's the mural telling us? What's the story? So, for example, I just now saw the Stilton Village mural, and it absolutely is one of the most stunning visual depictions that expressively tells the neighborhood story immediately. Uh, so I got that one immediately. Can somebody help me with this one? 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, and and uh, I hope you're ready for this one to be to knock that one off. Because so the, what this is going to happen here is on the left side that we're not going to be seeing here. And I, I guess I can stop sharing and kind of show if I can try to pull up the rendering. Kate, do you here. have the rendering that the, 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 yeah. okay, Great. that'd probably be more helpful. Yeah. Give me one second. Let me, I'll try to talk and do this. It might not be as smooth, but so what's going to happen here on the left side that was not shown is going to be more the say community aspect. And that's going to have several words that we thought really reflected Marion village, like community and diversity and give me one second here. And, and they, they source the crowdsource, the words, um from facebook so they asked right um there's a tate y'all asked the neighbors the community to provide words that describe marion village to them yes give me one second here i got it pulled up can you see that all right uh yep there it is yes okay so you can see here i'll kind of point out some of the words respect we have community, uh, positivity, communities in there. Um, and so this kind of shows a little bit. And we also have rumors because um, that that's the, the bar that, and location this is at as well. So we wanted to kind of give a little advertisement there to the to the um, host, to the business. Yes, to the host. Thank you, Jess. Um, and so we, we also chose this artist. The, the, the committee chose this artist because of his work previously. And we didn't really, uh, so uh, the last couple of years we did one that really was more of that picture that you kind of mentioned, Mark. And this one we wanted to be, uh, to, to give that community aspect, but also give, it wanted to be an art piece, right? So we, we got this great uh, vision uh, and we had this great uh, location at Rumors because you're gonna see it right past Parsons. We kind of wanted to give it a little bit of an edge, a little bit of a different, uh, vibe, um, and but it also still threads those those words, those values that are really important to to us as a as a community. So we think it it really melted those things together, um, and that that's one of the reasons why we chose as a, as a committee, as as a group, and a lot of the folks here were on that discussion to choose Roa. And and Mark, I would just add to um, for those that haven't seen the last installation. Sorry, my dog's barking. The last installation that we did on um, the Wonderlust Studio over on Fourth and Moral or Welch, um, that's a little bit more of the traditional kind of what you're thinking that you like with the Stilton um, Village one. Um, so we, you know, we already kind of had one place in the village where that was in the neighborhood where we took more of that traditional collage-ish type of. Um, approach and so to Tate's point this was a little bit more of a you know in your face art piece yeah thanks that was helpful I'll go look at the Wonderlust thanks Wonderlust uh, is actually like an applique that was uh, put up I'm not I haven't been by there I'm not sure if it's still up or not yep. it was still there it looks great awesome looks great. okay yes go check that out for sure mark because it's um it's very very cool looking so Thank you for sharing the rendering also, Tate. That's fantastic. I think that was helpful so folks could really envision um, what the final product is going to look like. And, right. and I would just I would just add, well, before we move on, I just want to publicly thank Tate and Tom and all the yeah. rest of the mural committee because they have put in a ton of work, especially when we had to switch locations, um, you know, last year and everything. And, and the, uh, Amanda, and I'm blanking on all the um, committee members, but... Um, thank you. Yes, there we go. Um, there's the one at Wonderlust Studio. But I just really want to say thank you to the Hataro Mural Committee. This is something we never really planned, just kind of came organically um, mm -hmm. during COVID. And I love that it's gotten now momentum and we're looking for more locations to do, you know, like-minded things. Um, we have the new owners of Bake Me Happy building. So hopefully, you know, we can, um, you know, maybe get some more traction in that location as well so a lot of great effort and it wouldn't be possible without all the volunteers from the committee so tate thank you very much and please pass our um regards on to the rest of the members i will thank you yeah uh tom amanda and everybody have, have been great so i'll pass that on and thank you to also jackie uh who owns rumors and roa who, who did the piece as well absolutely so, thanks thank you eric 
Awesome. Well, thanks, everybody. Um, really hope everyone can get a chance to go see it in person because um, it's it's pretty incredible when you really get to see it up close, both murals, actually. So hopefully everyone will get a chance to see this in person soon. All right, uh, let's move on to talk about some events. Uh, Allison, you want to take the floor for garden tour? Yes. Um, so we are working on uh, recruiting gardens and businesses. So we need business members to join and uh, a lot of our membership um, levels get a ad in the brochure. So that's a big selling point for our business members. So we want to make sure we get them in and get them in in time to get it into the brochure. Um, it is May 4th. I don't know how that happened. I feel like I blinked and it is now May 4th. Um, so that's May the scary. 4th be with you. Yeah, right. Um, Eric. <laughs> So uh, we're also we also need gardens. We only we've only had one um, one garden apply, and it is one of my favorite gardens in the neighborhood. So um, you know, I knew she was going to do it, so it wasn't really a surprise. So we need more. So Andrew, I don't know if you were thinking about putting yours on, not to call you out, but um, I think that you might be. Oh, there he is. I thought he left. His name disappeared, but he moved. <laughs> I was like, he was like, I'm out of here. No, we're um, not out of here. Just we're just good. chowing down dinner like everybody else busy, just trying to get everything done. Sure. But yeah. Another perk to the Zoom. Right. Yeah. I already did that. Yeah, definitely interested in throwing our name in the hat for the garden tour. Perfect. Okay. Apply, please. That yep. way we while, can count while we're, we're calling out, in. While yeah. we're calling out people, Mark has a nice yard too. Mark's been on before. We we sort of game again. It might be a time for return. <laughs> Got to represent Molar Mark. No, <laughs> my garden's <laughs> not not in the state to be representing Molar, so it's, it's all you. <laughs> Got to stop the rain and uh, find some time. But we're we're fixing <laughs> the So, um, you know, Mark, if you want to, please sign up. And then anyone else, if you know of anyone um, who may be interested or a garden that you really like. Um, we'd be happy to send you the the application as a as a PDF, or I can print them off, or drop it off at your house, and you can take it to your friends. Uh, whatever works. It's online. Uh, MarionVillage.org Garden Tour is there, so uh, it'll be here before we know it. So we really need to get get some gardens in. We're we're, we're working on. Um, I, I just I t I sent a message to Jay uh, Chipowitz who used to be of Hallen Owls, who is, uh, owns that building there. And uh, he's getting a new uh, business in there. So in the past, he has done a scavenger hunt. So we're hoping to be able to do something like that. Um, not really sure what that looks like just yet, but if anybody has any cool ideas and wants to join in on that part or any of the parts of the garden tour, we're happy to uh, have you. So just hit us up. And Allison, again, for everybody's benefit, what's the date of the garden tour? Jessica, it's the second Sunday, Sunday July in 10. July. There you go. Um, Allison, real quick, I was just curious, um, were we ready to announce the dedication of this year's garden tour? We can talk about that. Sure. Um, so we will have a dedication, um, a special dedication as part of the garden tour this year um, to a, uh, a resident of Marion Village who um, sadly did just recently pass away. Um, she and her husband really enjoyed being on the garden tour. Um, the house they actually purchased, Allison said, had been on the tour every seven years for many years. Um, and so it was important for them to, to join it as well. So we'll share more details about that. Um, we're working with her husband and mother and sister to develop that dedication and make sure that um, it honors her and, um, you know, the charity that she kind of asked folks to support um, in her memory. But we, we will have a, a special dedication this year as part of the garden tour. Sorry, I, I, I couldn't hear if you said it was every seven years their house was on the tour. Okay, thank you. Yep. Um, okay. All right. Well, wonderful. So yes, if you know folks that have a nice garden, please let us know. Like Allison said, we have a letter you can print, you can send them a QR code, you can send them a link, whatever it takes to get them to apply. Um, and gardens of, of all types in process, gardens that have been growing for, you know, years and years and years, we want to see it all. So please uh, tell folks not to be shy and, and to apply. We, we've even had gardens, we've even had gardens that are just pots, right? So like, <laughs> 
um, pots, raised beds, mm -hmm. whatever it is, front yard, backyard, whatever. We're so open to everything. And it's, sorry, I keep biting my tongue. It's more about, um, you know, the community aspect and bringing our neighbors in to see what, what we do. And I'll say um, my grandmas used to always come and before the pandemic started, my grandmas would come every year. And it was like one of the things that they really look forward to. So um, it's just super special for me. And this is yeah, also our first see. back in person tour since uh, 2019. So it's a big deal. If everyone Good goes stuff. to the yard sale this, this weekend, find one garden you like at the yard yes. sale and yes. make those people sign up. That's a good there you idea. Go, David. Perfect. Love it. Good. Okay. Well, before we move on to the next event, I just want to take a quick note to acknowledge um, we do actually have five business members currently. Um, you will start to see spotlights on our Instagram and our Facebook page. We just started it last week. Um, those will be every it's either Monday or Tuesday, I can't recall which. Um, but right now we have two silver business members, Chilljoy Frozen Treatery and uh, Gunzelman Architecture Studio. We also have three bronze, Bad Temper Bake Shop, Cabin Irish Pub and South Bend Tavern. So hoping to grow that list. Um, as Allison mentioned, um, everyone silver and above will actually have the opportunity to have a, a an ad in our garden tour brochure um, and just in general we have lots of ways that we like to try to support our, our businesses who are members and feature them so if you know of a local business please send them our way we would love to chat with them answer any questions they might have um, and we have four levels of business membership so there's no matter what level you you want to get involved with um, we've got something something for everyone so just wanted to take a quick note to to thank all of our current business members Okay, uh, also events, festival. This will be a pretty quick update. The committee took a, a little bit of a break and then we'll be meeting again next week. Um, we are still in the process of pulling together the food trucks that will be at this year's event. Um, also vendors, so if you know local folks who are businesses or makers, um, services that would like to be featured as a vendor, please let them know we are taking applications actively. Um, other than that, we have a lot of, you know, fun and exciting stuff we're going to do this year. Again, it's our first uh, festival in person since 2019, so we are very excited. Um, we'll have some form of uh, community art. In fact, we are looking for photographers and videographers who would like to be involved in that process. So we have an application up on the website to let us know if you're interested in that. Um, we will once again be doing a special yearly Marion Village t-shirt design. So we're taking applications for those designs as well. Um, both of those are up on our website and I believe we're taking applications at least through the end of May, if not through the end of June. I'll need to double check those dates, but uh, looking for lots of talented folks who would like to be involved with those efforts. Um, other, I'm trying to think if there's anything I'm missing right now on festival, but I think that's pretty much the bulk of it as we're kind of gearing up to, to get that effort really planned and going forward. We are hoping to bring back the silent auction this year, which is always a, a favorite. So get excited for that. Okay, uh, another event and it's this Saturday. So the first thing I need everyone here to do is really think good rain free thoughts for Saturday uh, because we will be hosting our biggest ever spring yard sale. We have a total of 60 addresses registered for the yard sale all over Marion Village. Uh, really excited about this one. We're hoping that the weather holds up um, and that it changes rather from current forecasts. So we'll have a nice beautiful yard sale day. Um, so many great things are, are out there. You can actually see the um, virtual map and listing of addresses on our website now. So go check that out so you can kind of plan your shopping trip for the day. Uh, following the yard sale from four to six at the Info Center, we will be taking donations of household goods and clothing for Goodwill. So great opportunity to do some spring cleaning and get those donations out your door right here in your neighborhood. Uh, we'll collect those again from 4 to 6 p.m. This was very popular last year. We filled 13 giant bins. So let's see if we can do that again. Uh, <laughs> hoping that, you know, this is a, a great opportunity for folks to be able to do some spring cleaning and, and maybe give back a little bit to Goodwill while they're doing it. So hope to see you all there. Um, and then let's see here. 
I will move into committee updates. So um, we don't have anything specific for beautification right now. Please remember we do have the Marion Green cleanups coming up. We're excited about those. We hope to have some news soon about getting the archway repainted, uh, working with a couple different contractors to help with that effort. Um, there's probably a permit involved and some things that go into it, but we are working on it. Uh, membership again thanks to our business members um, hoping to have some other membership uh, ideas coming up for getting more residential memberships going and getting folks you know to be really aware of the association soon um, mike would you like to talk about the upcoming social yeah uh so we have a fun <clears throat> happy hour this month it's going to be at the hey hey and we are co-hosting with schumacher place which has a pretty active civic association so um, looking forward to meeting up with them. It's going to be a little later this time. It'll be 6.30 to 9. So you've got plenty of time to get home and walk the dogs or whatever you need to do. Uh, there's actually going to be a food truck there. It'll be the Jersey Way, which is like hamburgers, hot dogs, snacks like that. So it um, should be a pretty good time. I'd love to see everyone out there. Might be fun to wear your Marion Village shirt, you know, to see how many more people we have than they have. A little competition. Um, but hopefully the weather's good and we can hang out outside. Awesome. Thank you so much for playing these, Mike. Really excited to see um, how this first kind of joint effort goes. Um, also just excited in general that we're kind of connecting with our neighbors in Schumacher. So uh, thank you again. Okay, zoning. Tate, I know you have another item to share with us quickly on zoning. Yes, just real quick. Uh, we have a, a demolition uh, application as well. Um, that's the address is 33 West Moral Ave. Um, that one is it's not a historic building, uh, just to note that. Uh, and the applicant is David uh, Lowendick as well. Um, so, Jess, am I missing anything? Or is there any comments or concerns about that? No, as far as I, I believe it's a warehouse or a commercial building that has had a roof cave in. So, um, certainly in those situations, Demolition is, is pretty well warranted, I would think, but no, nothing, nothing special that I saw or out of the ordinary. If anybody want, I have the permit up or the application up if anybody wants to see it. But Do you have a picture of it? Not of the building. I can maybe What's the address, it. Tate? We can look it I up. see it on, yeah, little. that's what I saw on Google Maps. But really sure David has the very that. attractive uh, street view picture. It's just a box. If we lose this building the neighborhood will be forever destroyed <laughs> what what what's what's the address tell me 30, 33 west moral 33 um, west moral 33 yeah. west moral yeah it looks pretty industrial over there i'll drive yeah. by over it's i think it's west to high right yeah oh yes. it's okay yeah yeah oh it's on the other side by double d's past double d's mm -hmm. oh god double d's maybe they could take that down while they're at it <laughs> sorry i mean sorry <laughs> so yeah, if it, from looking at the application, uh, just quickly, it looks like they did have a like a pretty significant um, cave in of the roof. So uh, sounds like it's a hazard, and they're trying to get it down. Yeah. So if we didn't, it'd probably become like a squatter's. You know. We don't want that. Yeah. Just want everyone to be safe and not have any hazards. So um, yeah. That's all I have. Thank you, Tate. All right, I don't believe we have any area, no, we do not have any area commissioners with us at the moment, so we will uh, skip over area commission updates and just quickly remind folks of upcoming events and activities. Um, the area commission will meet at the Parsons Library, I'm sorry, at Barrick Recreation Center, actually, I believe, um, on Tuesday, May 24th. Uh, of course, our next monthly meeting will be Wednesday, June 1st here on Zoom. Hope to see you all again there for that. Um, and we do have the yard sale coming up this weekend, which, you know, very ho hopeful and excited about. Um, otherwise, I just want to open the floor. Anybody have anything they want to share? Say hello? No, everybody's sick of talking. It's been a long meeting. Hey, so what can we do to, would the association help engage the city in paving these streets? I mean, Moeller is just tore all to pieces. I put in three one ones and all of that stuff. Uh, and, I, and Jenkins is even twice as worse as Moeller. I yeah. mean, shockingly, uh, just destroyed from start to finish. Um, can we use the power of the association to help promote repair, not repairs, but replacement? 
We've had these discussions um, before. I, I can tell you from, now this has been about five or six years on the replacement front, at least for those of us, Moeller is certainly one. I, I, I know there are a couple others. Those of us who are one-way streets from Parsons to High and are therefore essentially the avenue for, um, for the fire trucks. Um, we were told at that time by a city representative that it was very unlikely we would see replacement simply because of the time it would re require to shut down our street um, and that that could certainly be a problem for uh, emergency vehicles. Um, but again, that's been many years. There have been new developments since then. Um, kind of the same topic that, you know, when we discussed before, how do we get our, you know, just patching potholes certainly doesn't really work and, and doesn't hold up. Um, and we were told that 311 reports are the way to go. But let me check in with both Nancy Pryor Sully and our new, um, our new area liaison, Catherine Cole, and just ask them what we can do um, as an association, as a neighborhood, to maybe see if, if the city can start helping to get some of our streets truly repaired, not just kind of these, these temporary pothole fills that don't seem to last. Um, I'm not really sure what that will look like, but I will certainly check in with Nancy and Catherine. And Catherine actually, um, so Catherine's taking over for Beth Fairman Kinney, so she'll be based at the Reeb Center. She will be the liaison for the city and the entire South Side. Uh, she will actually be attending our meeting next month, along with a representative from 311 to talk about the updates to the 311 system. Um, so this actually may be a great time to ask that question since we'll have both of them here next month as well. So um, hope to get lots of folks there at that meeting to answer questions. And then, of course, I will, I will reach out to them before that meeting as well. Right. Jason. You may want to include Erin because she's on the public. Good, good point. Um, work services. Committee yep. Services. And then Mark, just to let you know. Um, so I live on Jenkins and we got a notice. There was that, I forgot one of those news shows, eye on you or whatever. Uh -huh. um, and we got a notice on Jenkins that they are going to repay our street this, this year, this summer sometime. Because um, they had that big, um, blow up or whatever in the news because they shine the light or whatever i can't remember what the name of the the program is but it's that segment in the um news cast but um so we did get noticed just that jenkins is going to get um repaved we also had a guy on our street that literally went door to door he printed out this sheet um it was like a letter and it had all of the city council um email addresses 311 wow. the director of public services and he went door to door and handed that out to everybody like and knocked on their door and explained what he was trying to do um, and encouraged everyone to, you know, go email all this. So I, I don't know if that's what contributed, mm -hmm. but then right, right after a month or two after he did that, then there was the news article. And then we got a notice um, saying that they were going to now we'll see if that actually comes to fruition. But that's what they told us last year. That's no, that's, in the fall. you know, because just the nobody wants to live in a neighborhood where the quality is like that right it hurts everything yeah. uh it doesn't help us improve our neighborhood it harms us and then you know for molar you know it's it's just a speedway all the time with just hundreds of cars a day it feels like but the reality the number of heavy duty trucks uh delivery trucks kroger trucks not kroger semis typically but all the other delivery trucks it's just horrific here and at we've had trees taken down they've knocked mirrors off and you know between the large trucks and the amount of traffic it's just destroyed the street so thank you and that layer we, we are muller is actually at least part of it uh is blacktop over brick so um that pavement over the brick tends to suffer a bit because it doesn't seem like it has as much to cling on to. So we said as well. Um, so yes, I will bring this up with both Catherine um, and uh, Nancy Pryor Sully. I will certainly include Aaron on that as well um, and just see if we can kind of bring this topic up and get talking about it and then again, discuss it, discuss it at the meeting next month. Carrie, I see you right there before you walk away. I know you had an item you wanted to chat about last month. Did you still want to talk about that? Was it Fourth Street? No, good. Okay. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. Okay. Anyone Can I say else? something real quick? Sorry. Of course. Um, if you are not familiar with the Harmony Project, they have an event uh, this weekend at the Lower.com Stadium. And it's like uh, the largest pop up choir. It's supposed to be like the pilot of an ABC show. And it's free. You just have to sign up for tickets. I put the, the link in the, the chat. 
um, seems like just a fun community thing. So um, if you're free Saturday, five to seven, you should check it out. Awesome. And Harmony Project has been a great, great help to us in the past. They've been huge volunteer uh, effort at our festivals and, and they've always been really great neighbors and friends. So excited to see them doing something local too. All right. Anyone else want to share or say anything before we adjourn for the evening? Okay, I think that's it. Then again, everyone think uh, sunny thoughts for Saturday. Hope to see you all out and about for the yard sale. I'm really looking forward to it. And please do spread the word about the garden tour so that we can make this one of the best ever. Yeah, Thanks. well, get yeah. your ponchos out in case there you go. the rain doesn't, the rain dance doesn't work, okay? We're not afraid of a little rain. It's yeah, okay. so you can get them at for 99 cents at Walmart. I'll pick you up some. <laughs> All right. It's a reverse rain dance. Yes. Reverse yeah, like, rain dance. It's like you do this instead of that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. See y'all this right. weekend. Everybody have a great week and stay safe Bye, out there. Bye, and guys. thanks again. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.